The three night, four day trip in the backcountry is the classic backpacking experience. But what do you need to take in order to be safe, especially if you are backpacking in bear country? What's up everybody, I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV and on this video, I'm gonna be breaking down all of the gear that I am taking for a three night, four day trip through the Wyoming wilderness. It is a spectacular place to travel and I had an amazing time and I wanna show you exactly what I am taking in order for you to be more prepared for your adventures in the wilderness. Okay, everybody, let's break it down, starting right now. Okay, so in case you're curious as to all of the food that's going into our three night, four day adventure, take a look here, I've got the filet. Uh, hopefully it doesn't blow off the mountain here. That would be unfortunate because I need this food. Uh, but I thought it'd be helpful to one, see it laid out and also to note that almost all of it, except for like some of the day snacks that we're eating today, all fit in that bear canister. Uh, that bear canister has been the bane of my existence so far today. I do not like it uh, and it does not fit very well in the backpack that I'm carrying. But it is a regulation. I have to carry it here to be backpacking here in the Bridger Teton wilderness. Uh, there are grizzly bears out here, so it just is what it is and I gotta do it. But I'm kind of amazed that it all, or nearly all fits in there, aside for what I'm planning on eating today before I have to pack it up and uh, store it overnight. I have some fresh goodies. Um, I cooked up or cut up some Adele's sausages here with some onion. I've got uh, some coconut oil in there, uh, garlic. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Adele sausage, sun-dried tomatoes, uh, and it's all going in the mac and cheese. We've got two servings of mac and cheese, two boxes, and a little bit of dried milk to help make it nice and creamy. Combining that with our coconut, uh, coconut oil here, that's still hard, uh, it's gonna be real nice. So we're gonna be doing chili with Spanish dal rice, on tortillas and we've got to gonna make ourselves some nice burritos um, and that's gonna be very exciting and then for our third dinner here uh, we're going for the lightest last we're going with trail topia sweet chili mac ginger stir fry ginger that's a little bit of a offensive term for me but uh, you know it is what it is um, and then some apple crisp dessert pro bar with uh, the chocolate peanut butter chocolate chip we got some beef jerky We've got some scratch energy chews and scratch uh, energy bars. Um, this is tuna for lunch. This is some more chili that I'm actually gonna use as a breakfast. And then uh, granola for another breakfast here. Um, so this is for two people. Uh, all of this is for myself and my partner, Christy. All of this is going to be cooked on a Jetboil Minimo and uh, our skillet here and it does come with an attachment so that the skillet can fit on top. So, a uh, funny story to me at least, uh, if you've been around on the channel, you might know that I have a Jetboil video that has gotten quite a bit of views and attention, including from Jetboil themselves. And I saw some of the guys that work there, they were mad at me, and uh, they then spent the next hour trying to convince me to give their stuff another run and to try out some of the other stuff. And I gotta say, a lot of people that were on the YouTube here, they did point out that I was just talking about the Flash. That is their like super rapid boil setup. And I haven't used the Minimo or any with the fuel regulators that you can turn it down to a simmer and cook and add on, you know, the ability to skillet stuff up. So I am taking their challenge and uh, I'm going to see if I can actually cook a nice meal, if I like their setup. Um, and if it can win me back. So uh, we'll see, Jet Boyle. I'm dubious. Anyway, I'm backpacking with my fun Canon 25 to 104. What the heck, why do I keep saying that? 24 to 105 uh, lens here. And this is new to me. Uh, I mentioned this earlier on the trail today. I'm rocking the new Life Straw water filter. And this thing has actually been really cool. I've really, really liked this. I'm familiar with Life Straw from their classic old straw that I have thought is pretty cool, especially for $20. Um, this thing I think is 60, 65 bucks, maybe 69. I'll check, there'll be a price uh, check uh, down below. 
Uh, but I really like it. And this is very similar to the Katadin B Free. Um, however, some differences between these two are the more durable material, which is gonna make it a little bit heavier. It is a little bit more durable material. I've seen the Katadins have a lot of pinpricks and uh, leaks and stuff like that. And then it has a faster flow rate, so it's easier to get water to move through that, uh, through the actual filter. So I really like that as well, because being able to drink easily is super important. I don't like to feel like I'm working to either squeeze it or to suck it. Uh, it's uh, just better to just feel like, oh, the water's right there and I'm hydrated. Still have my Zolio that I'm rocking as my satellite communicator since cell phone reception is dubious out here. But I have also been navigating with my CalTopo app that I downloaded, uh, basically set my routes that I wanted to do and downloaded the, the tiles offline. So now I can access it and it's super cool way to just know where I am and know how to navigate out here. I really recommend having something like that. And then a few other things that I've got with me are the Packstack Pros from Hillsound. This is the regular, this is the Pro. Uh, I've got some extra clothes in here and it's also what I'm packing this camera that I'm shaking right now. The Chacos are super heavy, but I haven't known if I need to do, uh, say cross some like knee deep water. That's why I brought those. Um, just in case we have some gnarly crossings out here because of how much snow melt is going on. A little ditty bag full of sunscreen and mosquito repellent and things like that. I have my paper map, um, so you gotta have your, your analog map so the batteries never die. My LED lenser headlamp that is key in this uh, backpack that I got from Hyperlite Mountain Gear. This is the Southwest 3400. Big thing that's different about this kind of backpack versus say my Mystery Ranch Bridger that I've been using lately, is this is basically a big tube. So I still have some clothes in here. I still have my sleeping pad. This is all this Dyneema fabric. And uh, the reason why this is so great is because it's really light, really strong and waterproof. So it's almost like I'm backpacking with a dry bag, just this bag. Of course, you do have to seal it upright for it to be actually waterproof. Um, but that's why people love these. They're super light and very durable and you just have a perfect dry bag on your backpack the whole time. So it's new for me because there's no organization. It's just dump gear into the bottom and then when you need stuff you have to pull it out. The biggest thing, I actually really like what people are doing with it and I like it myself. I could tell that my whole setup was lighter, but the downside for me is that these straps are just much less robust. Uh, there is way less padding, there's way less structure going on, and it is a much more simple backpack, which if you're carrying less than 30 pounds, it's money. Uh, that's a great setup. But I, because I have uh, two cameras actually with me, a microphone up here, and just a lot of food, bear canister stuff, bear spray, you know, there's a lot of extra stuff that's going into this trip and uh, it's kind of heavy for this. I am guessing that my whole weight is right around 42 pounds, 38 to 42 pounds. I don't have my scale with me, so I don't know specifically, but I'm guessing it's 38 to 42 pounds, which is just a little bit heavy for this kind of a backpack for me, which is why if you've been paying attention to me before, I've been using Mystery Ranch, and actually you can see here, because Christy's using the Mystery Ranch so clearly, how much more uh, padding and structure and hip belt uh, padding here and shoulder pads are here. So it's just a different animal. Okay, so I remembered, uh, this is the Stormloft uh, from Outdoor Vitals. It's their 15 degree top quilt. And uh, editor, if you could just insert that in wherever it makes sense, and whatever you do, for the love of God, do not let any YouTube viewer ever see this note to the editor. And I've been honestly so nervous because what the heck? There's nothing going on underneath you. So if you are an ultralighter or you've been backpacking a lot, you probably are familiar with these, but this is honestly literally my first time sleeping in it. So 
I'm nervous. Uh, the idea behind it is that when you're sleeping in a regular sleeping bag, if you're laying on the, on the down, if you're laying on the sleeping bag, whatever's under you, the down under you will actually be compressed and will provide no insulating value. So therefore it's wasteful. It is not worth carrying. So ultralighters decided, let's just cut that out altogether. Let's just only have a blanket on top of you and then whatever insulation you get from the pad or the mattress below you. Makes sense, I get it, um, except for the fact that I don't know if it'll be as cozy as a mummy bag. I just like curling up and just feeling like I'm secure, I don't have any drafts, I can cinch that hood up around me, and that is going to be different. So uh, Dan Becker has actually been the guy that's been like, Eric, you need to try it out. I think you're actually gonna really like it. So in case you are curious about further details, it just straps around the underside one time, I think there's a second point if I had a second strap, but I only have the one. Um, and so hopefully I just don't move around too much and create drafts and I don't know. Uh, we'll see how that goes. And if you're curious about what Christy is sleeping on, she has got the Rab Neutrino 600 bag, which is a really nice bag from Rab. I use this all throughout Peru when we were trekking up in the mountains. So I have left behind my scent for her to enjoy. And uh, what? Oh, she's nervous. Uh, but it's a really nice bag. It's down to it's rated down to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so it's a little bit. It's a three season bag, but it has a little bit extra warmth rating. And I've just really liked it. So she gets that one. I'm trying the new one. And then she's sleeping on the Rapide Air, which is not the same bag pad that was failing on me a few months back. Um, I returned it. There was a manufacturer's defect, and uh, this one is. A-okay, has been checked off, I've used it. Uh, this is the Tungsten Ultralight three-person tent from Marmot. And I've actually had this tent for a long time. So this is not new to me. And uh, it has been the best tent that we have used for backpacking with a dog. Uh, so if you are going out there with a dog, with a partner and a dog or something like that, it is really nice to have that extra space. So as you might know, two-person tents are generally just enough for two people, uh, shoulder to shoulder, and there's not much room. So if you try to cram in a dog with you, it's just kind of not good for anybody. Uh, so this is the tungsten ultralight. And that being said, it's like three and a half pounds, I think three pounds, 13 ounces. I can check, I don't know, it's an old tent for me, um, but it's not what many people would consider ultralight because that is under, say, uh, into the two pound category. So under three pounds. It's definitely not that light, but I feel like because it's a three-person tent, it's bigger, it's bulkier, it's 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 borderline. But all they call it the ultralight, so it's the ultralight. Uh, but I really like it, and it's held up in so many storms. And Kovu and I, and Christy, Christy, Kovu and I have really enjoyed it as our main tent for the three of us when we all go backpacking. Okay, that's it, editor. You may now end the video. Okay, that was everything that I brought with me on my three night, four day trip in the Wind River Range. It was an amazing trip. And uh, in case you're curious, everything kind of weighed out to be right around 41 pounds, I think, uh, for that whole trip. So it was a little bit heavy, uh, but it was an amazing trip. And sometimes you just got to carry that extra weight if you want to eat well, and especially having those bear canisters and things like that that are not light. So if you have any questions about the gear or the trip itself, uh, I would love to hear from you here in the comments below. And if you just wanna see a rundown of the trip video itself, well, we have a whole video on that as well in which I do some more details and more talking about the gear and my thoughts on some of the gear testing that I did on this trip. So if you're interested, make sure you check that out video out. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and are subscribed to your backpacking TV. I'm Eric Hansen, I'll see you later.